Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. It's an eventful day for Apple today. They've dropped several new products, including the long awaited, long rumored iPad Pro 2020 model. And this is with the triple lens camera. It's not quite triple lens, more like 2.5 lens. And there's a couple nice surprises on the iPad Pro, but mostly it's what we expected Apple to refresh this thing with. So starting off, it still comes in the same 11 and 12.9 inch sizes, still has face ID, still an LCD display, not quite at mini LED yet, but most of the changes are happening on the inside here and on the back of the iPad. I'd like to preface by saying the outbreak threw a wrench in Apple's plans. I highly doubt that this is how they wanted to unveil this iPad Pro. Although it isn't such a large refresh, it is showcasing their new time of flight LiDAR sensor, and that's something coming to the iPhone this year. So it's very likely they wanted to have an event, but couldn't do it. So they decided to do a news press release, and it's possible we could see another release this week. Anyways, on the back, let's take a look at what's going on. This is a surprise for me. The leaked iPad Pros actually had three camera sensors. This has two, a new ultra wide, which only comes in eight megapixels for whatever reason. You would think that they would take the same sensor from the iPhone and they may have done that. We don't know yet until the first reviews come in, but it's a lower megapixel count. Strange. To the right of the new eight megapixel ultra wide is Apple's new LiDAR scanner. So this is essentially a very large time of flight system. It'll allow you to scan environments five meters away and scan and map entire rooms as Apple has demoed. It's composed of two separate parts. One I can assume is a time of flight, the other the LiDAR sensor, and they work in conjunction with the rest of the camera system. It appears to be very complex and something that Apple has been working on for over two years. They even compared it to the system being used on the new Mars rover. The demo we saw in the ad is quite impressive. The speed at which the system will work, the accuracy, Apple is touting it as the most advanced AR in the world, and it'll open up a world of possibility for games and just apps in general. Of course, the iPhone will be getting this tech later in the fall. The prediction about the ring flash time of flight that I had is most likely wrong, and this is the design Apple could be going with, something similar. So we'll be tweaking our designs over the coming days. We knew Apple would be adding it just in what way, it appears that the time of flight is much larger than Ben Geskin anticipated. He said it would be about the size of a mic hole and that doesn't appear to be the case. Now, physically, the new iPad Pros are pretty much the same as the 2018 models. I went down the spec list and could find almost no differences besides the ones that Apple highlighted. I did learn that it will be 10 grams heavier in both cellular and Wi-Fi configurations versus the 2018 iPads. Now, one other area is the new A12Z Bionic. I did not Z that happen. <laughs> okay, that's bad. I did not see that happening as the A14X has long been rumored and by big sources. So the A12Z is certainly a surprise. Now, the differences that Apple told us about, it now features eight core graphics versus the seven core on the 2018 models. There's new thermal architecture. So somehow Apple is cooling this thing better on the inside and Apple says it has tuned performance controllers. So the iPad Pro can now edit 4K video and design 3D models thanks to the internal update. It's kept fairly vague, but as Ice Universe points out, the iPad Pro is already in the top of its game. Even a slight bump to the CPU is very welcome. And Apple highlights that this new tablet has a 10 hour battery life. The old one was 10 hours as well. So one of the coolest things about today's release is the new Magic Keyboard. So this was rumored found in the betas of iOS 14. It's not going to be an iOS 14 exclusive. It'll be a 13.4 exclusive. And what a unique design. I actually like it a lot. Apple's calling it a floating design with a cantilevered hinge so you can smoothly adjust it up to 130 degrees for the optimal viewing angle. It features a full-size keyboard, which is backlit. I love that. So you can use this thing in the dark without having to revert to the screen keyboard. And of course it features a trackpad. So this is the long rumored trackpad feature that's coming to the smart keyboard. It's now available. And by the way, on the back of that smart keyboard, you can see the Apple logo. This is the first time Apple has ever had one in a horizontal layout. The overall design looks sleek. There's a reason this thing costs $350, 300 on the regular 11 inch size. It looks advanced. I like that a lot, but is it worth the money? We'll have to see. Now, one other cool thing about it is that it has a pass through USB-C design. So on the side, you can plug in and charge the iPad Pro through that port. 
So I'm assuming that this will be using the smart connector, the three dots on the back of the iPad to charge it. And that leaves one free port open so you can use your accessories, anything you want. This definitely becomes more like a true computer now that it has an additional port. So this is a must have accessory. And another very cool thing is Apple's new cursor support. So with this new iPad, and I'm pretty sure it'll be for all iPads with 13.4, it'll snap to certain buttons as you move your cursor. I'm seeing mixed reactions to this online, but I love it. Essentially, it'll snap to the button and the cursor itself will disappear once you do have a selection. The selection will be slightly highlighted so you'll know where to click. And I like that a lot. It's a very interesting take on bringing the computer interface over to the tablet. As we saw in an earlier leak, Apple wants to make the cursor support as natural as possible on the iPad. They don't want the iPad completely to rely on it as it is a touch-based device. The cursor essentially disappears when you're not using it for a little while. And as we can see in these button selections, Apple wants the cursor to be near and visible, but still be there and helping you out. So I'll wait to pass judgment on it until I'm actually using it, but I like the idea and the interface for it looks really cool. And a few more things about this iPad. Apple says it has five studio quality microphones. The old iPad had three, and it's very likely the new microphones are taken from or very similar to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has a fantastic microphone system. You can make out conversations even from several feet away. And Apple highlights that this has four speakers, which is the same amount as last year. Unclear if they're better, bigger, or louder in any way. We'll have to test it out. Otherwise, wireless does improve also. So Apple is now touting this does include Wi-Fi 6 and 60% faster gigabit class LTE. It's unclear in which way Apple is attaining the 60% faster LTE speeds. It's possible that it's taking the modem from the iPhone 11, putting them into the new iPad Pros. I also noticed that this new iPad Pro supports 30 LTE bands versus 29 on the old model. So there could be a difference there as well. Otherwise, my mode does appear to be the same on both. As for pricing and storage, the same as the 2018 models starting at 799 on the 11 inch and 999 on the 12.9 inch storage also starts at 128 gigabytes and leads up to one terabyte max storage so you can spec this thing pretty expensive but the prices are the same as the 2018 model you just get more value for your money i already ordered a couple so i'll have these on march 25th and that's when they begin to ship or are available remember apple stores are still closed so these will have to be ship only apple did also up upgrade the MacBook Air series, it's a very formidable upgrade. So they dropped the price by $100, the starting price to $999, and they upped the storage, made it faster, and included a new keyboard. So it now includes Intel's latest 10th generation processor. It's a 1.2 gigahertz quad core i7 with boost speeds up to 3.8 gigahertz. So it results in two times the performance over the last generation. And with the new Intel Iris Plus GPU, you're getting 80% more graphical performance. That's always welcome. And of course, Apple has updated the very problematic butterfly keyboard to the new inverted T keys, scissor switch keyboard taken straight from the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And best of all, the price goes down while the storage goes up. So now the base configuration is 256 gigabytes of storage and the price tag starting at $1,000. Last year it was $128 and $1,100. So definitely very welcome, very refreshing to see that Apple charging less for more. Now Apple did also refresh the Mac mini. Unfortunately, it's still using processors that are four years out of date. Seriously, the sixth gen Intel processors in 2020, but they did double the storage. So for the base model, you're getting double the storage at 256 gigabytes and the higher up model is boosted to 500 gigabytes for the same money. Still out of date, overpriced, but you're getting more value for your money now. I still would not recommend this computer. I'd also like to mention for those of you that have been eyeing a new iPad Pro or a MacBook Air for quite some time, Apple has just refreshed their refurbished website and the last generation has dropped in price. The iPad Pro starting price now refurbished is $549. That's a really good deal. Apple has also updated the cases for the iPhones. So there are a number of new colors, including raspberry, deep sea blue, peacock, surf blue, cactus, grapefruit. And for the Apple Watch, there's a new band called vitamin C, which is an interesting choice. But if you wanted a fresh new color for an Apple OEM case, those are now available on the website. I like that Apple refreshes them based on the season and the styling. And last couple of things, including the S20 Ultra giveaway winners. Now iOS 13.4, Apple has announced it'll be releasing on March 24th, which is a Tuesday. You'll need it to of course get the new trackpad features on the iPad Pro, and there are a host of new changes on the iPhone. I'll be releasing a full review. I'm actually very excited for this update. 
It's supposed to be one of the biggest changes to the iPhone since the initial iOS 13 launch. And stability wise, it's been great. I've been in beta, so I can't wait to get off of it and get onto a stable firmware, but it's been great. You guys are gonna love 13.4. And uh, otherwise, these are the winners here. So two of them from India and one from Canada. I'll be shipping these out to you fairly soon. So check your emails. I'll be getting in contact. Otherwise, that's the new host of Apple products released today, the iPad Pros. Have a review on those soon. Looking forward to that a lot. And the triple lens camera and the time of flight LiDAR sensor seems very exciting. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.